Hi guys, welcome back to this tutorial series on making an FPS weapon manager. This is the second to last episode in this tutorial series, which is pretty exciting. Our FPS manager is starting to look really good. If this is the first video you're seeing in this series, then I would highly recommend that you check out the other videos in this series where we go from the default 3D kinematic body to a full FPS weapon manager that you can use to create FPS like games like Halo or Call of Duty, all in the Godot game engine. If you've been enjoying this series, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at picking up ammo from weapons on the ground and adding things like ammo clips that our players can pick up. A huge benefit from all of the work that we have done so far is that we aren't even going to need to do that much to achieve this. And ammo is even going to be added to weapons that we have in our stack, even if they aren't the current weapon, which is amazing. So let's get started. We can do a lot of different things with our FPS weapon manager. Uh, we can pick up and drop weapons, but right now we are missing a pretty major feature, and that is the ability to uh, pick up the ammo from the weapons and also just pick up ammo from ammo clips and things like that that you might want to put in the world. Realistically, after we do this, you can just attach this ammo script to almost anything and you could be able to pick up ammo from it. So let's get into it. Okay, so let's jump into our FPS weapon manager. We've got a lot going on right now, but we are going to be changing some of the code on our pickup detection. So right now, when we walk over a weapon, we are checking if the weapon can be picked up. And then if it's not in the weapon stack, we uh, add it to the weapon stack and change to that weapon. So these weapons all have ammo. What we can also do is check to see if those weapons, if they are in the stack, to see if we can take the ammo from them. So we'll just need to add an else statement right below this because we say if weapon stack is negative one, which means it's not in the stack, we pick it up. But we can just say else pass, and I'll just write add ammo, and we'll add our function at the bottom of the script. So I'll scroll down to the bottom of the script, and we'll create a function here. And we'll call it add ammo. And it's gonna take a weapon reference, which will just be the string. We'll call that weapon. And it'll also take the ammo. And we'll create a variable here and we'll just call it underscore weapon. And we'll make that equal to the weapon list. And we'll use that string reference to get access to the resource. And now we are going to figure out how much ammo we need. We'll call the variable required. We'll make it equal to weapon dot max ammo and we'll subtract the weapon reserve ammo. So that'll tell us the difference between how much ammo you have and the maximum ammo you can carry, which is how much we need. The next we will calculate the remaining, which will be the max. So we'll use the function max here ammo minus required with it being a minimum of zero. Obviously we won't, we don't want to uh, get into the negatives here. If we are using all the ammo, then remaining is gonna be zero. Okay, and then finally we can say weapon dot reserve ammo plus equals to min. And so that we're going to uh, add this to our reserve ammo. Make sure you add that plus before the equal sign. Min ammo or required. So in the case where the required amount of ammo is less than the uh, total ammo that is available to be picked up, we want to only add the required amount. We don't want to add any more than that. I'm just going to come up to the reload function and uh, take the signal that we emit there and I'll just paste that in. Still using that old way. You can watch my video on the new way to do signals in Godot 4. And then finally, we will return remaining. I'm just gonna add a return value as an int on this function, just so that we know that if we mess with it in the future, that it definitely needs to return an int for this to work. But that's totally optional in Godot. You don't need to do that. Some people do it on all their functions. I tend to do it on just functions that I know definitely need to return something. And sometimes I forget to. Okay, so after this else statement, where we actually wanna 
do this, add ammo, I'm gonna create a variable called remaining again, and I'm gonna make it equal to add ammo, brackets, body dot weapon name, and the next part, which is the ammo, is gonna be the sum of both body dot current ammo plus body dot reserve ammo. And then I'm gonna say, if remaining is equal to zero, uh, then we can remove the weapon from the game. So we've picked up all the ammo, it's of no value, just delete it. And then finally, we can say body.currentAmmo equals to zero and body.reserveAmmo equal to remaining. And so this is the simple way, I guess you could say, to do it. You take all the ammo and you just slap it onto the reserve ammo for the uh, weapon on the ground. Uh, this will work pretty well. I'll go into the remote just so we can see the math happening in real time. So let's have a look at Blaster N. So as you can see, I'll walk over and you, <laughs> you can instantly see that the reserve ammo is just set to 20. It's not a big deal, but um, it is something that we might look at changing later on. Um, okay, so now let's take a look at these reloads here. Things look like they're mathematically working out. We can pick that up. It's got 19 ammo. And reload it we can shoot it a bit uh, we got 10 and we pick up 10 and if we pick that one back up we only have 10 left and we can swap them back and forth and we can see that it, everything is working pretty much as we expected it i'm not a huge fan of just sending all the ammo back to zero it's not a big deal um, but i think we will change it but you know that's it that's how you add ammo if that's all you're looking to do we're done but there's more that can be done so stick around Okay, so let's fix up this current ammo and reserve ammo. It's gonna be min remaining. Okay, so we get access to the weapon list body weapon name dot magazine. So it's either gonna be whatever's left or the maximum of the magazine. And then we just make the reserve ammo equal to the greater of uh, remaining minus body dot current ammo or zero. And that'll actually do the opposite. We're going to put all of it in current ammo and the rest will just be sitting in reserve ammo. And personally, I think this is a better design choice, uh, but ultimately these kind of things are really just up to interpretation, how you want your game to feel. I think it's way cooler if you pick up a weapon, you can shoot it straight away. Um, but you maybe you want to like, maybe you feel like it's more realistic if you have to reload it first. You know, there's a bunch of different things. Maybe you try to make a, like a more difficult game, Dark Souls-esque FPS, and uh, you want it to be, you know, so that you have to do a bunch of stuff before you can even use a weapon. Like you would have to in real life. You can't just pick up, a, I mean, sometimes you can pick up a weapon and start shooting. I don't know, I've never shot a gun before. Um, <laughs> little fact. Anyway, we're rambling here, so that's done. So let's get into it. Right now, we have the ability to pick up ammo from weapons, but what if we wanted to just have an ammo clip or that's on the ground that we can pick up or anything like that? Maybe you want to have a box full of ammo, but I'm going to make it on this clip here. I'm going to copy, I'm going to save a copy of one of these rigid body scenes because we're going to basically just harvest all the code here. So I'm going to save the scene as, and call it blast n clip at the end so that it's the clip for the blast n and i'm going to probably delete this model and the collision shape and i'll just add in the clip and i'll make it local and take away all the nodes and stuff just so i've got the mesh there i'll move that to the center of the scene and create a simplified mesh by that little menu in the middle there and the one thing that we need to add to this script so that it can work with both these clips and the weapons is an export enumerator. And this is gonna be a weapon type and it's either gonna be a weapon or it's gonna be ammo. And this will be called pickup type and it's gonna be a string and I'm gonna make it equal to weapon. Uh, that doesn't need to be a string. Um, so I'll just change that to a string. And so what this will do is it'll make all of our old rigid bodies weapons and I can change this one to a, an ammo and the rest will all stay the same. So this will all work with them. Um, you could create an entirely new script, but I think it's just easier so that we can make it work with everything we've already written. Just sort of just change this script so it can work with both. So we've got this enumerator. Um, we can bring this, uh, this clip into the scene. I'll make a new node here in our world. 
and I'll call it ammo just so that we can organize all of it. I'll drag that blaster and clip in, make it a child of that node, and I'll just move this to the back so it's a little bit out of the way. I'll turn it on its side so it looks nice and pretty. And uh, then we just need to change the code a little bit. So let's come down into the pickup detection. And right now we're seeing if the weapon is in stack, but now we also want to make sure that the body that we're walking over is also of type weapon. So we'll go body.pickup type is equal to weapon. We're not even gonna check if it's ammo. All right, which is cool. And I'm gonna put a print out there so we can see it as we walk over. Okay, so uh, we need to see that as, as we walk over an, a weapon, it still works and we see the printout weapon. So now we can switch to our blaster N. Let's empty this clip a bit so that we need more ammo and walk over this. And look at that, we just get 10 straight out of it. It's just that easy. Okay guys, that will do it for this lesson. We can now pick up ammo for weapons on the ground and ammo clips and other things like that. How did you do? If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to put a comment down below or you can always join the Discord where you can ask me more direct questions and suggest tutorials for me to work on in the future. As always, I really do appreciate a like and subscribe guys. If you wanna support the channel further, you can always do so over at patreon.com slash shaft games. There we have the final episode of this tutorial series already up. And if you're a Patreon, you will always get access to any videos I do in the future in advance. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Isaac from Shaft Games and I'll see you next time.